Have you ever hoped that you would see Shakespeare's Fairy Queen from the comedy A Midsummer Night's Dream looking through a telescope? Meanwhile, it's quite possible. The modest gas giant Uranus is worth paying attention. It has a host of various satellites around. One of these satellites is Titania. For the first time, an earthly observer saw this huge and icy moon in 1787. William Herschel, astronomer, was the first to discover it. He was the only one to observe Titania for the next 50 years. So the quiet and frozen moon, what is it like? Which one of the earthly automatic probes dared to visit its surroundings? The only one who saw the planet firsthand was Voyager 2 in 1986. Not a single interplanetary station has ever flown into this location, and in the near future, no flights to the Uranus system are considered. What did the fearless probe manage to find out? By virtue of the exploration of the pioneer Voyager 2, we'll learn that Titania is the largest satellite of Uranus with a diameter of 1577 kilometers. The reddish-brown planet orbits 436,000 kilometers from the smoky turquoise giant. The general area of the surface of Titania is 7.8 million square kilometers. This moon is constantly turned by one side to the parent celestial body, and one year on the satellite, less the same time as one day, which makes about nine Earth days. Titania is influenced by the magnetosphere of Uranus, so active plasma particles regularly and continuously bombard its surface. We believe that the hemisphere facing the giant has a darker hue for this reason. Neighborhood with Uranus gives Titania incredibly long periods of summer and winter. Each one lasts for more than four decades. This means that during 42 years one of the poles is immersed in darkness and the other is full of light for the same period of time. This strange world is most likely very cold. We could assume that during the summer solstice, the temperature on the satellite surface doesn't rise above 300 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. The crust of Titania is solid water ice. In addition, the half of the crust are stone inclusions and possibly organic matter. Of course, there are some chilling secrets in the Voyager 2 mission. It's possible that between the core and the mantle of Titania, there is a subglacial water ammonia ocean. Although there is no exact information about this yet. If the water body does exist, it could be 50 kilometers deep and its temperature could reach 117 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. It's possible that after the incredible ocean had been frozen, the crust of Titania subsequently cracked, which increased the surface by 7%. What else should we mention when talking about this satellite? The largest and most massive moon of Uranus is a world of vast valleys, ledges and deepest craters. The planet's surface is quite young, which indicates that it has been renewed recently. Despite the fact that geological activity somewhat combed and smoothed the satellite's body, it still has one impressive scar. The largest known crater of Titania is called Gertrude. You can see it in the upper right part of the image. It is a funnel with a diameter of 326 kilometers and a central hill 150 kilometers wide, towering 3,000 meters above the monstrous pit. This is the largest impact crater of those that cover the surfaces of 27 Uranian satellites. But this type of terrain is not the only one. There are grabbins on Titania, which are 50 kilometers wide and up to 5 kilometers deep. That means that if the observer were on one side of the fault, he would not even realize that he is standing next to the canyon. In order to do this, he would have significantly rise above the surface of the Uranian moon. One of the most prominent among Titania's canyons is Messina, which runs for about 1500 kilometers. 
Compared to it, the terrestrial Grand Canyon is a minor notch, which is not worth attention. The slopes of Messina are covered with water frost. It is evidenced by polarimetric data. The spectrograph has found light deposits around craters and faults, which has different porous structure. The astronomers have concluded that this is, is what's commonly called frost. In general, the landscape of Titania is the result of a tough confrontation between endogenous factors, such as cryovolcanism and external impact effects. There are only 15 craters, two canyons and one ledge on the map of the satellite. But there are more of them on the planet. Therefore, our descendants will most likely give names to so far unnamed ruts and cliffs. It's easy to notice that the name of the relief objects discovered on the satellite of Uranus entirely relates to the works of great William Shakespeare. The Merchant of Venice, 238-kilometer Belmont Canyon and 64-kilometer crater Jessica. Hamlet, the titanic crater Gertrude, Anthony and Cleopatra, 33-kilometer long crater Iris, and others. What's also interesting, Titania has the atmosphere. But don't be excited too early. The atmosphere here is extremely weak and thin. It's present only in certain seasons and is prone to migrating to the shaded poles. The air of the satellite mainly consists of carbon dioxide. Nitrogen and methane are too light to be found in the ghostly atmosphere of Titania. These elements will instantly drift into space. 30 years ago, Voyager 2 approached 365,000 kilometers to Titania, but explored only 40% of the surface. Meanwhile, only slightly more than half of the indicated territory could be mapped. The detailed study of the surface of Titania was hampered by the fact that one side of it was in deep shadow, so it couldn't be explored. If you looked at the sky of Titania, you would see Uranus, ringed with thin, barely noticeable hoops. As we have already mentioned, the satellite never turns to the planet with its reverse side. It's easy to guess that the gas giant has forever settled in the sky of Titania, while the opposite hemisphere has never seen its formidable neighbor. Let's think what will happen if someone suddenly comes up with the idea of organizing a manned mission to the largest Uranian satellite. Desperate travelers will have to understand a simple truth. The planet is extremely inhospitable. There are severe frosts on it. The rugged surface is full of hellish faults and deep craters. The radiation background is off-scale due to the proximity of Uranus, and the change of seasons is so rare that there is a possibility to die until next summer. The one consolation to the absence of the atmosphere on Titania is that there are no destroying hurricanes with speeds up to 300 km per second, as they are in Uranus. Besides, it has a solid surface, unlike its gaseous neighbor, where an alien wouldn't be able to take a seat or even stand. Let's look at this beautiful but harsh moon once again. At least we have the eyes of one of the voyagers. It's very sad to contemplate, but our interest of the conditions on Titania is purely theoretical. Because not only astronauts, but also automatic probes will not visit the distant planetary system in the near future. Therefore, at the moment, you have a great chance to become famous and self-actualize by offering your own author's project of the mission to Titania. So the motto of the comments under this video is, use your mind and surprise NASA. We're waiting for your creative ideas as well as your likes. Recommend our channel to your friends and push the bell.